You're about to watch my open dispo strategy call with Rick Sheldon. If you guys are looking for a real estate investing CRM software that does everything for you, automation, text call, record, everything. I mean literally everything. Make sure you guys click the link in the description below so you can get access to it for only $1. I don't know how long it's going to last, but make sure that you tell Rick that Philip Ty sent you and you guys can jump off the video. But if you want to take a look, a deeper dive into what we go over in the strategy call, make sure you guys stay tuned. Thanks, Rick, for meeting me with the uh, strategy call here. I just uh, wanted to kind of get your feedback in regards to what should I do if I'm like a brand new wholesaler and what this call is about. Of course. So yeah, the strategy call here, our goal is to really get your lead flow system set up. By the end of this call, we should we should actually have marketing in place. If you're ready, we can import some leads and activate them. If you're doing PPL or agent outreach, like depending on your business model, by the end of this call, we'll actually have a lead flow system and teach you how to actually get started using it. So okay. that's the cool. goal of the call. And before we dig too deep into it, I'd like to uh, check a couple of things just to make sure that we're able to do that. The big yeah. thing to check first is the HQP verification. So just go into settings and then phone numbers, trust center. And from here, we're going to understand whether the application has been submitted to get your ATP brand and campaign uh, registered and what the status is. Yeah. I think Taking a second to load. There it goes. Actually, it was loading when I went to messaging analytics, but the trust center is taking a second. Yeah, that's fine. That's kind of normal. By, by the way, while we're waiting, I guess just explain your business model to me. What actual lead sources are we trying to implement here? Yeah, so mostly I'm going to be doing a paper lead and paper click for the most part. So uh, setting up Facebook and then also potential Google ads and then also buying leads. Um, just the sake of it. And then, you know, I'll, I'll do some one-off cold calling, cold texting here and there, but nothing too crazy. So let's set up the PPL first, but really just so you know, under automation, we're going to tap into this folder called lead flow system, direct the seller inbound, assuming that you want to use our standard yeah. process. Yeah. I don't want to build this out. This is kind of crazy because I'm, yeah. you know, if I was a new guy, which I, which I, I'm going to start from scratch. Basically this, yeah, this is a lot of work to do. Just looking at this as a newbie. If I was a newbie, I'm like, dude, what the heck? Kind yeah, of walk me is, through what the heck this is. <laughs> yeah, this is one of our simpler workflows as well. But I think the more important thing is it's just best practice. Like we've gone through several iterations where we've made things more capable and complex and then tried to simplify it and then done that yeah. multiple times. So this workflow is much smaller than some of the crazier ones. But yeah. all of the um, PPL sources that you sign up with, even the PPC and Facebook or meta ads that you run, really we're going to tap into the same process with all of them because they're so general and they're so common, but we do want to have multiple triggers and this first branching step just so we can track KPIs properly. Okay, cool. Which uh, PPL providers are you going with? So right now I have, I don't know if you have 99 offers. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to get the lead Zolo. Uh, too as well. So that's a, that's one thing that I'm coming up. And then property leads, I do use property leads. Um, I think you have I speed to lead. We have that too as well. So everything, um, everything, yeah, basically everything. So let's set up uh, lead Zolo, property leads and ISTL. And we can um, come back to the 99 offers. I think I'm not too familiar with them, but happy yeah. to learn about them. And it'll be easy to tap them into this exact thing but we will set up your zaps for you here. So I'm going to go into our Zapier account. I think I'm in the wrong account actually. So we'll come in here and we've already built several for each of these lead sources, except for that 99 offers. So I just mm -hmm. go to lead solo. Yeah. I, I don't have an account with them quite just yet, but I plan on setting one up here shortly. Well, that's okay. okay. Um, the step won't really change too much here. I'm going to okay. duplicate this. What you'll do is, this is going to give us a web hook yep. and we're going to need to take that web hook and provide it to lead Zolo. I think the contact's name over there is Danielle or Daniela, but okay. she's on their integrations team. And 
you'll just send her this unique URL that I'm going to give you now. And when okay. they start generating leads, it'll already be set up properly. Perfect. So I will wait that wait for that in the in the in the chat. Yes. Okay, cool. Zapier actually changed a couple of things. Pick off a child key. <laughs> okay, I'm a little uh, stuck right here because this is, oh, here it is. Here's the webhook, but yeah, okay. Zapier definitely just made a little bit of an update there. Okay, so here's the webhook for Lead Solo. So uh, just to kind of get clarif uh -huh. clarity, if, if I'm like a new person too as well, like. I would send this uh, webhook link to the integration team over on Lead Zolo, and then they would basically integrate it on there. And then whatever lead I come comes through my door, it will go into my CRM and then mm -hmm. head into my my systems, right? Yeah. So webhook is a great way of connecting two systems and basically saying if this happens in one system, then push that data or do whatever we want with that data that we've captured in the webhook. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're going to take that data and add or update a contact in lead connector, which is basically what go high level calls, uh, what they call their Zapier integration in case people like me who resell open this or who resell go high level in case we were to try to hide the fact that this was go high level, they call it lead connector. So gotcha. if you open this app yourself, lead connector is the app and the action is to add or update a contact. And I'm just going to make it. So this goes to your yeah. account and now we're adding or updating a contact to your specific account and Sweet. this will come through mapped out with all the variables from lead zolo so this is where we say whatever lead zolo called first name we want to populate that into our field called first name and so on okay awesome and it comes in with a tag lead zolo that tag is what's going to activate that workflow that we looked at previously gotcha this is so this is so convenient for me as a person that's like maybe not as tax tech savvy. I'm like, dude, this is kind of crazy if you think about it. Like all the connections and building out a whole CRM and automation. It's just yeah, you make you guys make it so much easier to like implement. Thank you. Yeah, that's basically my goal with this whole thing is to speed up your learning curve or basically make it so you can get rolling with all this cool stuff as quickly as possible. Like this is a great example, actually. This um, one sec, elephant properties. So this is like, the very, there we go. Yeah, there you go. This is a great example of our goal there though, because it's like, I could tell you that you need to go sign up for Zapier yeah. and teach you how to do this. But my real goal is just to do it for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Now you're already generating leads and they're being nurtured properly without yeah. me having you go through too many steps and get stuck along the way. Yeah, it's definitely like a, a who, not how, right? I mean, I, I could learn, take time and do all this, but that's going to be like brain damage for me. I'd rather just have have you, Rick, as the, the go-to person and just kind of help me go through it way easier. Yeah. Yeah, but you can probably tell uh, when I make these searches in here, we've done it a few times, so. Yeah. I need to reinvent the wheel. Exactly. Sweet. So you're setting up all these PPL channels for me. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so the second webhook is for property leads. Perfect. I'll add that to my property leads. So the webhooks. This next one will be what ISP to lead. Yeah, we can do that next. Yeah, the 99 offers one is more like paying. You, you can pay for credits. Like you just kind of have to buy the information on their website. So it probably doesn't have a, a like a, a Zapier webhook, I'm assuming. But I can do a quick Google search. And also I could provide you one and you could get in touch with their support team and if they will help facilitate it, cool. And if not, then there's other ways we could accommodate something like this. Like even if they were to provide the leads to you in the form of a Google sheet, we can uh, build 
another zap where instead of a webhook being the trigger, it could be a row being added to a Google sheet could trigger something like this. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this third one is for ISTL. Okay, high speed to lead. And actually, if you can log into ISTL and plug this into the integrations, I know that they make it relatively simple to add this and test it on your own. So if you want, we could do that and actually kind of um, execute the workflow and show you what that's going to look like. Funny enough, my partner has the uh, IS ISP to lead. I don't, but I have property leads. Um, we could do property leads if that's not too big of a hassle. I don't know if that's... Uh, do they... Um, so I think property leads, uh, the owner of that allows some people to get into that section to add that. And some people have not uh -huh. had access. So maybe you could check to see if you do, or I could even log into my ISTL. Yeah. Lead. If I have my uh, login credentials saved anyway, haven't used this in a while. Oh, you do look at that. Oh, boom. Okay, so under CRM integration, we've got yep. this hook URL. So I'll just uh, update that with yours, actually. And we'll just send a test in. Okay. Uh, let me make sure that I've updated this. Yes. So um, going back over here into your account, what's going yeah. to happen as soon as I push this lead, it's going to come in with this tag. It's going to activate yep. this workflow, come downwards, go through a couple of things that are just for housekeeping, like to help us organize your deals better for you. And then based on which trigger caused them to activate this workflow, it's going to be guided down that branch. So ISTL is going to go here, update the lead source and the campaign name. And okay. then Ultimately, regardless of lead source, we want to activate the same sequence. That's why all these go-to steps consolidate over to this step. So okay. now this is what's really going to happen as we activate it. We're going to assign the contact to you, or actually, who would you want to assign this to? Uh, me or Noble, uh, both, both of us, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> then we'll notify everybody, or we could change that to notify only the assigned user if you prefer. The assign, uh, all users fine. All users fine. Yeah. If it's within the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., it's going to go to the right and it's going to involve a call step. It's going to prevent that if it's before 8 a.m. or after 8 p.m. So if it's within those hours, whoever was assigned is going to get a call and it's going to say new inbound lead from ISTL, Rick Sheldon, press one to connect. And if okay. you press one, then it's going to attempt to call the seller. It will not attempt to call the seller if you don't answer it or if you answer it but decide you're busy. Or uh, So those are the only ways it's going to attempt to call the seller. And if you do attempt to call the seller and they answer, it's going to remove them from this workflow due to this setting called stop on response. Okay. But if, if that doesn't happen, then it's going to continue on. And in this case, we can turn an AI chatbot on with specific objectives of getting them booked onto a call and then continuing the conversation a little bit naturally by asking about motivation and timeline. So wow. pretty effective. That's crazy. Yeah, and when it comes to AI, this is a very great use case for it. Some people try to use it for cold outbound intros, which is a big ask of AI to reach out about a property to a seller who's going through a delicate situation like probate, for example, introducing yeah. the topic of buying their house delicately. Um, you know, it's a bigger ask if we're doing cold intro, but here somebody coming in from an ad, they anticipate being booked into an appointment. So the AI does a phenomenal job of looking at your availability on your calendar, speaking conversationally via text message to them, explaining what times we have available presenting those times. And when we've agreed on a time, it'll actually book it into your calendar and notify everybody. Gotcha. Wow. That's, that's amazing. That's crazy. Yep. So here's an example of the first text that goes out. Yeah. Actually, here's something we can do, which we 
can now format it a little bit nicer so you can see it. Yeah. That's, that's the first text. It'll go out a minute after the call did not happen. You know, like if you attempted to call them, but they didn't answer, mm -hmm. this would still continue. But if you had connected, these things would be prevented. Gotcha. So let's save that one. And then 30 minutes after, if they have not responded to that, they will get the second text here. And then if they don't respond to this one within six hours, then we tap into this very important concept, which I know we didn't start by talking about this, but like we will talk about this next concept quite a bit to make you understand just how important it is and how useful it is. But the seller disposition field aligns with a lot of things. The pipeline, the stages of your acquisition pipeline are the exact same buckets as the options of this field. So the field and the pipeline match. And if you update the field, it's gonna move it in the pipeline. So right here, okay. six hours after, if they haven't responded, then we update the, disco the, the disposition to discovery, which is gonna activate a lot of things. It's gonna move it in the pipeline, remove it from the initial sequence, update the tag. And because discovery is a stage that revolves around a nurture sequence, it'll also add it into that nurture sequence. Oh, wow. Okay. so. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all these things, we tie a lot to the seller disposition field and we treat that like our core bucketing system, which I'll go to this pipeline and show you how those match exactly here. Or actually yeah. this is the agent pipeline. So acquisition sellers is right here. So you've uh -huh. got those exact buckets. Yep. Here's some test fake leads probably. If those aren't yours, I'll delete those. And but not now, now we're back here. So let's... um push this in as a test. Yeah. So send test, that's executing the webhook. Yep. That's okay. activating the zap. That's pushing the data to your Zero. account. That's creating the contact with tags. This tag in particular was used to activate the workflow. Yep. So if we come in here, whoever, maybe it was you, maybe it was Noble, it looks like you were the lucky one to get this lead. Yep. Um, the test, the phone number is fake, so it didn't work. But the call, like you should have been notified if you have the app downloaded anyway. Yeah. And would have been I called. Don't think I got notified, but it's it's still fine. Yeah, so download the uh, lead connector or high level app. Those those are two apps. Again, high level tries to think that they think that I might want to hide the fact that it's high level. Um, right. Maybe people used to do that, but now high level is like a selling feature. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, the high level app is what I would recommend you download. I think it's got a better yep. color scheme. Yeah, yeah. So you'll be but notified there, and then the call didn't happen, so it's going to start texting after a minute. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Let me just download that. And then I'll download that after the, the call here. Make sure that we don't hang up any time. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you do you have any questions so far or do you want me to continue on? Yeah, you can continue on. The, I don't have any questions so far. I think, um, I mean, I'm sure there's like people that are going to want to know how do you, like if they have no money or whatever, let's say let's, they're doing cold calling or whatnot uh, or cold texting, they can definitely do it on the platform, right? Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, so that is related. So if we go back into this bucket or this pipeline, which uh, has all the bucketing system, you see Tony Stark came in here with the address. Yep. It also says where he came from, PPL, I speed to lead. That is why he landed here as a new lead because PPL is, it's a lead, pay per lead. Yep. So yep. you don't need to generate a lead from a prospect because they were already generated. But that's why that did not start at the first stage. If right. you're doing prospecting to cold prospects or even to warm prospects, but people that you have not considered a lead yet, that's where these two stages come in. We have a workflow that you could tap into. It's really cool, actually. And it'll say, based on the vexation point or the pain point, in other words, it okay. will split down one of these branches. So you'll be able to add all of your sellers that you're prospecting to into this workflow. Oh, wow. And then based on the vexation point, it's going to go down one branch or another, each of which activate a dedicated chat bot. Oh, tag wow. It and start texting it dedicated to that pain point. 
That's crazy, dude. That's amazing. Holy crap. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then anybody who replies, Dang. first time they reply, if they reply with a word that's not an opt-out word, then they would move automatically to the responsive stage for you to gauge the intent or gauge the interest level. And if you look at the message and it says, yes, what's your offer? That's not really that good of a lead, but yeah. it's better than somebody saying, take me off your list. So that would be maybe somebody that you move here to alert the acquisitions team. Okay. Dude, that's crazy. That That's a lot of work that you just showed me. Like, I don't know <laughs> if people are like watching this. That's a lot of work to actually think through the whole workflow process and then obviously code for it, automate it, and then kind of throw it into your pipeline here. So that's that's insane. That's that's a lot of work, man. Yeah, appreciate it. No, it's, I'm a little bit obsessive about it, but I think we've gotten to a point where it's it's nice and clean and and it all revolves around this bucketing system, the seller disposition field that we've been talking about. So let's just con continue on with what happens when we get this lead in. Yeah. Um, idea, let's go down the ideal route and then the less than ideal route. Yeah. So lead comes in. <clears throat> Ideally, you get notified, you get the call and you answer it. You press one. You attempt to call the seller. Now you're on the phone with them within seconds of them coming in as a lead. That's ideal. And what is that call? It's basically what a lot of people refer to as the process call. The call yeah. where you're processing a lead and you're trying to collect enough info to get on the offer call next. Because you can pull off a two-call close system a lot of the times with these leads. You could even do one call close if you really wanted to, but a two-call close system is pretty common. And to walk you through that first call, we have this process call button along uh -huh. with a bunch of other custom buttons up here. But this is going to walk you through all the good stuff with regards to the verification uh -huh. of some general info, then occupancy information, then um, bathroom, kitchen, oh wow, roof, windows, mechanicals, Dude. all these things. And we have a lot of like click to answer so your team can get on the same page with what a lot of things mean. So you don't have to type a bunch of notes as you're going through. And also these discrete answers are much more useful if you're trying to relate them to KPIs. Like how much, what size assignment contract were we able to achieve for P, for houses with roofs or sorry, windows less yeah. than five years old versus older than 20. You wow. Know, it could be a pretty good indicator that if you just type in notes, it's going to be a lot harder to correlate yeah responses to assignment fees dude that's crazy man that's i didn't know you built this out this is freaking <laughs> phenomenal bro oh my gosh yeah thank you thank you and then um basically at the end of the survey it would ask you which disposition should they be in now like that'll be in the survey itself is like now where do they belong so again ideally we're on the call with them within those six hours yeah and we prevent them from going into discovery ever like ideally there's no automation you know well there's automation but there's no like pre-templated nurture messages if we can avoid it get on the phone right away get our process call completed schedule our offer call get the offer accepted move on with our day but wow. if that doesn't happen because your team's just unable to get them you know a lot of the times you'll get a hold of them and they'll say oh i feel i'd never even filled that out you know yeah, you yeah. people that just lie about it for no reason and where yeah. did they go? Or, you know, they uh, they said, call me tomorrow at 2 p.m. You call sure. them at 2 p.m. and they don't answer because they know you're the one calling. And then you yeah. keep, and they just kind of fall into this game of, I thought about it. I do need to sell, but I'm not really ready. So, you know, I'm kind of blowing you off. Yeah. That's exactly where the discovery nurture sequence comes in, which again, they automatically go here six hours after coming in if they haven't responded to the oh. original stuff. And this is where the bucketing system comes in. Just by changing the field, it's going to go through a workflow. It's going to remove the new lead tag. It's going to replace it with a discovery tag. It's going to move it from the new lead stage to the discovery stage. It's going to pull mm -hmm. them out of any workflow that they may have been in and add them into the dedicated discovery workflow. Okay. Wow. That's, that's, a, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it sounds like it's a lot, like you've built a lot here, which is makes, you know, a lot of investor lives a lot easier and it's a lot to take in. Um, do you guys have like a support center that you guys have like training on like on a weekly basis, monthly basis? Like how, how does that, how does that work? 
So we do have a pre-recorded library of oh, wow. training. These are a lot of general go high level videos peppered in with some of our custom videos. Okay. A lot of our more custom things are best delivered in live format. So we have okay. these live events where you see we've got, I've got to schedule my Tuesday and Thursday calls this week wow. still, but every single week we have an office hours on Friday where my team will answer in a one-on-one -on -one breakout room setting. We've got a more uh, presentation style newbie zoom for navigational info. Okay. And I always pepper in a few topics like over the last couple of weeks, we had a disposition series and we had a chatbot video. We had a or organizing your custom fields thing. So yeah, we think uh, live training is massive. And then what I think is even cooler than that is this REI campfire, which wow. all of our members come into. So you can access it here. As soon as okay. you signed up, you would have been invited into here. And okay. in, we've got, it's basically like school where okay. you post and comment and there's leaderboards and rewards for climbing the leaderboards. Uh, there's courses with the past trainings. So a lot of That's courses. sweet. Wow. Okay. That's all in, all in Go High Level Systems. You don't have to go anywhere basically to get your information, your automation, calling, texting, emailing, et cetera. Yep. Yes. And uh, even leads, if you want, if you need more leads, we got you there too. We're rolling what? out a, a direct mail done for you service. Like as we speak this week, okay. it's the first week that we're accepting clients for that. And we've also got partnerships with uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, William Yu, who's helping yeah. my paid ads. So we've started just kind of taking people that I know, like, and trust and helping them help my clients. That's awesome, dude. That is amazing. So it's a, basically an all-in-one system for you. And so, man, this is like the easy button. If I were to like start all over again in real estate, this is like the easy button, like no joke. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, sorry, I got off track here, but um, kind of walk me through this this pipeline that we have here. I, I know you've already explained the first three columns here, the actually the first five columns. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So let's say that you know, again, in that ideal, back to the ideal scenario where we were able to actually have the process call and uh -huh. we determined from the call that they are interested, you know, that's where we move into the little bit more manual side of setting your own reminders and steps to get that deal moved across the finish line. And from here, we want to get them to a point where we consider them needing an offer. So those right. are totally different, but interested is like, they do want to do something, but it's pretty early. Maybe offer status is very far along. It's like, we need to get this deal fully underwritten so we can actually deliver our offer. And the reason I jump over here is because the next thing is basically getting your contracts sent out, whether yeah. you're LOIs or contracts, you can do it from within the platform. You don't need DocuSign, PandaDoc or any of those wow. document or tools. Not Dude, only, yeah. Not only do you not need them, you're losing efficiency if you if you are using those. Because think about it: yeah. the standard way most of us do is you get a seller, you get to a verbal, you need to make your contract, you go into DocuSign, you maybe have a template over in DocuSign, but you have to set up the template, send it out, and then monitor your inbox for them yep. to sign. So now that's already three tools. You got your CRM to get them to that point. You've gone to DocuSign to fill it out. Now you're monitoring your inbox. Yeah. Imagine instead if you just, from your CRM, click, hey, I want to send a contract. Oh, wow. And it's dude, either, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That and then is so awesome, dude. Yeah. So you send us your contracts. We don't really get into the providing of contracts because I don't like to try to verify who's in sub two sure. and who wasn't or anything like that. But we'll help you get your contract set up here. And in my land account, I'll show you what these are, like what your goal could be. Like you'd yeah. get multiple contracts loaded up into here. So oh, wow. even if I'm sending a subdivide as an ovation to a seller, you know, you can be that specific for the type of offer. And in this example, I just need to fill out one field to submit this because it's an email LOI. Because oh. this particular one is not an e-signature contract. It's just sending off an email LOI to that person. We don't need to, you know, really do a lot of formal things. We're just trying to tweak the email slightly here. But you can, you know, do a full e-signature type of contract as well. And 
it's going to send off either an email LOI or it'll tap into this contract section, okay. which I'll show you the template that you've got available. Yeah. We just keep a general LOI to kind of get you started and show you sure. what's possible. But oh wow, you see how these pull in variables? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those are filled in from the survey that I showed you. And then when you submit the survey, it activates a workflow. And now we know that they have these variables filled in because they were required to submit the survey. And then we just send out this template filling in these variables to the person that we were on the page of when we submitted the survey. Dude, that's wild, man. That is that is so efficient, dude. Holy crap. That is so sweet. And and what's cool about it is you don't, now you don't have to go to DocuSign and monitor or your email because yeah. your conversations and emails are handled within here. And the contact record has a great place to store these documents. So when you're on the contact page, you've got your documents tab right over here. So yeah. you'll see all the ones that have been sent with the status of sent, viewed, signed. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. And so if I wanted to up, like upload my own contract on here and I just got to, let's just say, just create the tags or like port over the tags on the contract side of things. I mean, I'm, I'm sure your team helps us, helps people set that up, I'm presuming. Absolutely. Okay. And I've done a bunch of live trainings on it. Awesome. I've done at least one that's very, very comprehensive. So cool. I can send that over as well. But yeah, my team will help put them together for you. That's awesome. Okay. And then as far as the process call, I just want to go back to that because my mind's kind of circling on that. Once like the caller or me, whoever fills out all the information, is there a submit button on the bottom of there or is it just kind of tags on, okay, is it next? And then yeah, it gets- Yeah, so you go next and then on this, it's basically like, oh. how did the call go? So if, oh, it, okay. if it was excellent, that means there was a motivation and a timeline, meaning we want to update the disposition to interested. Uh -huh. If it was good, that means there was some motivation, rough timeline. Right. We still want to move it to interested because we just want, you know, both of those kind of fit that criteria, but there's, it's good to differentiate, but yeah. fair is, you know, some motivation, but they've only got a vague timeline. So yeah. we can associate these with basically which disposition it would be updated to. And actually, uh, before I move on, I just want to mention, this is something we've actually moved away from. It works fine, okay. but what I do prefer instead is actually a situation where the, the process call yeah. Just uh, the process call literally on that page just says, what disposition are they now? It just cut out. Oh. Some stuff. Yeah. So this makes it a little bit more straightforward on like, you just had the call. What would you consider them to be now? Which bucket are they in now? Gotcha. Oh, that makes way more sense because then you just put them in that bucket. After yeah. You. And now oh. the act of having the process call is what will divert them from going into the discovery call. Or the discovery okay. workflow. Gotcha. Is that is that in the working progress to be deployed to all accounts or just kind of like still um, testing? No, it's it's fully deployed. I'm not actually sure why it's not in your account. Well, we can update that um okay. after this call, but awesome. it's it's ready to roll out. Sweet. Dude, that's amazing. And then like all the other buttons are basically like needs underwriting that could be sent to the underwriting column or underwriting needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's uh, a lot of different things with these, and we've got some guides on them. Uh, I won't go into too much right now, but yeah, you don't have to. Here's one example. It's like based on the contact type and things, we could nurture the contact a certain way. Oh, okay. Based wow. on motivation, cadence. If the seller tells you about another deal that they have, you can pull it in this way. Oh. If you uh, if you click underwriting needed, it would it could easily notify your underwriter and drop them into a certain Fuck smart it. list somewhere else. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. the other ones, I think we don't really need to go over. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, dude, that is so, dude, so efficient, man. That is awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's really the stuff that we definitely want to go over on this call. Um, there are a couple more things I could show you the data portal if you want to maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what is the data portal? So the data portal is a new development that we've made and I'll go back to the land account and show you how it works over here. Yeah. So it's a portal where we can log in. You can have a seven day free trial to this if you'd like. And I'm sure you, you should definitely take us up on that, by the way, sure. even if you don't want to stick with it, I'd appreciate your feedback and you'll get yeah. several hundred pre foreclosure leads and oh, wow. the ability to um, 
launch out hundreds of offers on market if you want. So we have an, a direct agent side and a direct seller side. If we look at direct agent, that's what my team's doing with this for the most part. So okay. we'll say, I want to go into South Carolina. You choose a few states. We have access to all the states, but we, we limit you to three to four of them. You choose the property type. So this team, we're going after land. Actually, uh -huh. I'm going to go into North Carolina just to disturb my team a little bit less because South Carolina is our most active area. Okay. I think 850,000 square feet comes out to about 20 acres, which is good for our subdivide projects that we're looking for. Okay. I can search for a city or a county. So let's go into, I don't know, maybe... Hulk. So we've got listings here. I like I like this big one here. That might be, yeah, be, uh, something cool. So we can look at the on market listings here. Oh wow! We can find a lot of the property information. Dude, that's sweet, dude. I didn't know they had this too as well, man. It's like literally an all in one system. Why do you guys? There's nowhere. You don't need to go anywhere else. Yeah, especially when you see this, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna lose it. So you can grab a property like that one that we just looked at. Yeah. You can click here and push it into the CRM either with no offer or with a cash or creative offer. So if oh, I want to push this one in with a creative offer, it's going to say, what offer amount do you want to use based on a comparison to list price? So yeah. if, we're, if we're doing creative, maybe we can go up to 80, 85, something like that. Deposit amount as a percentage of whatever that offer amount would be. Mm. And then I usually leave that at one. If I push this in, I'll show you what that's going to do in a moment. Yeah. But I also want to show you what it looks like if we push it in with no offer. So okay. let me grab another big one, actually five, five mil here. This one doesn't have very much. Uh, oh, it's got a little bit of, it's got maybe enough yeah. frontage. So let's push that in. And we will say we want to push it in with no offer. Yep. We could make that do nothing, but what my team does, this is the way that we push it in most commonly. It pushes it in and it initiates a texting conversation by having AI read the listing description and fine tune the intro text message based on the listing description. Dude, that's wild. Oh my gosh, no way. Yeah, so Dude, this is the one that sick. came in a second ago. This is the one we sent the offer on. So this is like how we format these. Wow, that saves so much freaking time <laughs> that's like two clicks dude yeah then check it out we got the listing description here let's say that we move this one because it's a good deal and we want to move it over to fact finding it would be in our new our agent pipeline here i'm just going to move it to this fact finding stage hopefully my team doesn't get too distracted <laughs> by this one <laughs> because uh, i just want to highlight this note section you see yeah. how it's now, and right now it's going to go through this workflow app because what I did, it looked at the planning and zoning, it went online, found the planning and zoning department, uh -huh. and it gave me the links that are most likely to get me the answers that I need as far as whether this would work as a subdivide and the top five phone numbers that could help me as well. Oh, wow. That's and sweet. That, and then after that, it took my favorite deal analyzer file, made a template of it, and linked it into the contact record as well what yeah so that stuff all the stuff that i just went down this detour of is not standard this is because right. this is my live team and we've put a little bit of work into getting these notes to work how we need it there but now i want to show you the second contact i pushed in yeah this is like the type of text is the P Ridge property in Mill Spring suitable for subdivision opportunities? We're interested in adding value through land subdivision. Oh, wow. Yeah, Dude, that's so, crazy. Yeah, it's not just like a, some standard template you're sending out all day long. It, you know, it pulls in the details, so it feels a little personalized. Even though we have this opt-out language, this really helps make it seem like we're targeting yeah. properties specifically. And this also works with prop like just regular single-family homes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. You can make offers like you can make like at least 50 offers a day easily within like <laughs> two hours. No, within, like, no within two hours. Let me, let me do one thing. So I will do this in Michigan because Michigan is something that um, my team's not actively working and I've got these going to a demo account, but okay. si 60 days on market. Let's even put, you know, max two years of ownership. No result. Huh? 
So we got, you know, a bunch of oh, them wow. here. We're okay. going to add one of our next developments as a select all button. <laughs> but right now, like, let's say we just grab all these, push them in. We want to make a cash offer, 70%, 1%. Cool, send. It's just going to push them all in and make a bunch of email LOI offers. Oh, really? So you can do that in like six. I was way off. I, you can do 50 offers in like, what, 20 minutes easily, man, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So these are coming into the demo account. It's today the 21st. Yep. So these are all the ones that are coming in. There's more coming in as well, probably. So here they are. They're also getting started on these. So all these ones that are in this pipeline, you know, you can tell all the ones that just came in today. And if I go, yeah. they're going to be getting those email. Otherwise, eventually. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure you got to do, got to do ChatGPT and all that stuff to. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll take a minute. Oh, there he goes. There it goes. Offer for this one, and it pulls in you know, the calculated amounts. That's so crazy! Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's like, there's like no excuses not to get any like deals anymore. Like seriously. Especially because we offer it for like a dollar to get started and a seven day trial to that. You could get started for a dollar and send out hundreds of offers. That's crazy. Like how much of the, uh, is like a hundred dollars a month after that? Like what, what's the cost for associated with that? So the data portal itself is $200 per month afterwards. And um, what I showed you is going to make you more money than that. But also yeah. there's, there's like two very important updates that are coming to that that are going to okay. make it oh no i forgot to even go over the uh the direct to seller side you can save yeah. searches so you go into a state county pain it's a combination of a county property type and pain point and you save these as searches and then oh, whenever okay. it's the public record it would land wherever you wanted so this is for sellers so any single family property going through pre-foreclosure in Kent County when it hits the public record is going to get pushed into, for me, a Google sheet over here. Gotcha. Wow. That's, yeah. Wow. That is so sweet, dude. And the, the major development that we're making to that one is we're making a mailer list because I recently brought on this data expert who's responsible for tons of direct mail done for you campaigns. She's with one of the other players before. And yeah. she's coming on. We're offering done for you direct mail. So we're developing a pain point for mailers. So you can just save a search that evening. You would get thousands of records for that County. You would yeah. take that. We would take those and manage them and get those used as your mailer list. So oh, wow. a lot of cool stuff coming together around this that's, data portal. That's awesome. Um, out of curiosity here, I also want to make a uh, PP, PPC pay-per-click campaign. Um, and then I'm also wanting to do a forum, like to kind of bring the potential prospect or lead into a form just so I can filter them out based or disqualify them based on certain criteria. Can I do that and go high level? Yep. You can probably do just about anything and go high level, honestly. Um, and that is a pretty important piece of this. So you can actually build all of your websites and funnels here. Yep. So I'll show you this one. I'm not a designer and I'm also not okay. a marketing agency. Yeah. <laughs> this is mostly designed to uh, demonstrate the PPL flow that I've already shown you. So uh -huh. this, I don't use this one. Go work with somebody who can build your better website than this. Sure. But this website is built in Go High Level. The survey here is built on Go High Level and the workflow will be activated when you fill out the survey. So God. you can you can absolutely build all that and you can run your PPC campaigns to a dedicated landing page like this. Sure. And then we can control the lead source and all that. Or you could even have a more direct Google integration where you go down to settings, integrations, and we can integrate your Google account. That's going to be for your email and yep. calendar. But then over here, you've got... Facebook. Yeah, I agree my Facebook one already, yeah. Uh, it's somewhere else maybe. Um, Facebook. Oh, and here, reserve with Google. I think this one, you can activate your ad account okay. and you can actually get some good analytics by doing it a little bit more like that. I kind of prefer and recommend generally the sites because, you know, running it to a, a site, then it's just like, I, I always track my KPIs 
technically based on forms or surveys being submitted. That's yeah. just my favorite way of like triggering a KPI event type of log. Exactly. So that's my my approach. But yeah, you can integrate your Google account and have a lot more analytics as well. And then also Facebook as well, right? Yep, Facebook. And here's the cool thing with Facebook. You don't have it yet in your account. I I don't think. Marketing. Oh yeah, you do, but you haven't signed up for it most likely. So it would prompt you to get started for 49 bucks a month. Sure. You can actually launch meta ads from here. Yeah. So you can come in here, create a campaign. Right. Choose where to run it, set your budget, do all the things. This oh, isn't wow. saving you any money or anything. You could do all the same stuff out of yeah. the business manager. It's just an efficiency thing. It is. It is. Um, and then if people don't have any money, obviously you can upload a CSV file and then up into contacts and then basically put them into your CRM and then start calling them that way or sending mass text message on a drip campaign. So mm -hmm. I know we didn't go over that today, but um, it is a an option that's uh, very fundamental to go high level. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, and if I wanted to have a custom forum, like um, like a question by question, like questionnaire, is that like a custom tech, custom, custom form that I had to make or is it more... So I tried, tried doing it last night, but I didn't get any good luck with it. Well, yeah, I think you're maybe talking about a survey. So here's one that- Oh, I'm yeah, the survey. Yep, I'm looking for a survey. Client. Yeah, so a form is a single page questionnaire and then a survey is multi-page. So yes. this is an example of a survey. So do you have, you know, does this apply? Yes, yep. okay, then move on. And then this and then move on. So right. yeah, you can build the survey here as well if that's the question. Yeah. So is that, how do I build a survey within go high level? Is there a, is there another form page? Is there another page that says survey? Yep. So sites. under sites, we've got the funnels, which is where we were looking, but then up on this header, we have a lot of different types of sites, forms and surveys. Are oh, the there it is. Common ones. Okay. All right. I yeah. got to go survey. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. All right. Well then. Okay. Uh, so yeah. What else do you need to feel comfortable to get activated with these leads? Um, I just want to make sure that I'm a 2 P compliant now. So that way I can start, start funneling leads and getting started today as much as uh, quickly as possible. Yep. So I did verify that you are good to go. The only thing awesome. would be to make sure you have phone numbers. I think I do have phone numbers. So all of them should be good to go. I believe. Yep. Awesome, dude. Dude, man, thank you so much, Rick, for for you know, jumping on this strategy call. It's been like super helpful, super, super beneficial. I mean, I learned a lot just from that. I know you've built this thing over many, many years and I can't wait to use it. It's It looks freaking amazing. Yeah, I'm excited to see you cranking. Actually, just a funny story before we go is that yeah. this call that we are on right now is about a week after sign up, typically. Yep. And a recent client who signed up who's doing this PPL strategy you know, of course I taught you a lot and clarified a lot, but it's set up with the PPL specifically so smoothly that this guy, you know, G Grotzen, he's down in Florida. He signed up and before the strategy call, he was like the first client to get two contracts before the strategy call. <laughs> dude, that's amazing, dude. Holy crap. Yeah. Is he, what, what kind of, uh, do you know, he's using Google or is he using he's Google? He's doing PPL actually, yeah. only PPL, but okay. he's using a PPL provider that um, is relatively smaller and I don't want to say unknown because I did find one other person who knows them. They were okay. called lead sharks. Lead and, sharks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they've apparently got some good leads because that's awesome. Know, they definitely played a had a hand in getting him there as well. Okay. Dude, that's freaking awesome, man. I um that's amazing. So if people want to get access to open dispo, where can they go? Opendispo.com. You can grab a call with me or my team and we'll give you a demo if you want on that same page lower down, you could get started. And if you want to get started for just a dollar, which is part of this new special offer we've got here, yeah, um, I'll send you a link here, but it's called dollar.opendispo.com forward slash offers. Just and a dollar, that like really just one whole USD, that's it? One dollar per year to get started in the CRM. That's There's sweet. usage fees for texting and calling, but every CRM's got that. And this funnel that that 
link would take you to is built in go ahead level <laughs> all yeah. my sales is ha handled in open dispo and all that so the funnel the automation the product everything's yeah. built in the tool that we've shown you here and as you go through that funnel you would be able to sign up for one dollar and get the seven day trial for that data portal gotcha man we'll have that in the link um that's that's amazing that's a it's such a great offer like for all that stuff that you guys do with the crm i just that's amazing, dude. That's so crazy. <laughs> I appreciate that. So that was my open dispo call with Rick Sheldon. As you can see, the CRM does so freaking much. If you guys want to learn how to structure offers and collect information from sellers, make sure you guys check out the video right here.